You ever get the meat sweats? Connor, stop it. You are baiting me right now. Stop I don't like that. it. I feel like I'm on freaking Z-Way right now. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Hi. It's been a while. Not allowed to sing anymore because. Oh boy, well, my no, my PR team told me not to talk about this, but they didn't say I couldn't sing about it. Kevin, you can't do that. It's my hyperfixation. <laughs> oh, Kevin. <laughs> I just ruined this episode in like 30 <laughs> seconds flat. Congratulations. Do you, do you notice this? <laughs> I can't see anything, Kevin. I, I, I have I have a tiny Lego guitar. I don't know. Of course it's fucking Lego. Here's Kevin with his Legos, everybody. Well, I don't have I don't have an actual guitar or ukulele. I was gonna use a ukulele. I, if I had a ukulele, I would have used that. Kevin, how do you know I didn't have props for this and you just ruined that? Because why wouldn't you open the episode with that? Because it's never mind. Anyway, welcome back to Fruity Cereal. I don't like my co-host. <laughs> I'm obnoxious. Yeah, a little bit. Oh my god! A happy uh, first day of Wrath Month, everyone. Yes, happy Gay Pride Wrath. Month. Pride <laughs> Month is officially over. We are now in Wrath. We're now in Wrath, Gay Wrath. I know that's a joke that everybody rolls out every year, but it's so funny. I love the idea. Well, of gay you wrath. know, it's. We'll talk about it. We'll we'll talk about it. We it applies. By the way, speaking of gay shit, um, guess what? I'm finally wearing my my heart of the ocean. Uh, <laughs> the little pendant you got from the show. Yeah, and it's broken now. What did you do? I think I might have pulled on. Oh, there it goes. Yep. Oh. Yeah. It this it broke. It broke on camera live. You saw it first. Yeah. Well, it was being held on by like one tiny little wire. Oh, I, so I it probably... doesn't light up anymore. No, it does not light up. Yeah, unfortunately. Oh, oh well, it was ten. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I could find a new one on eBay, I'm or maybe eBay. you can buy one by go going to see the show. I guess. Okay. You anyway. live in New York, Connor. You could do that. I I suppose, but like I'm gonna spend. Oh, never mind. Oh boy. Anyway, anyway. welcome back to Fruity Cereal. It's, I guess, I guess the heart of the ocean's going back in the ocean, like in the movie. Poop. That was a spoiler, Kevin. For a movie that came out over 20 years ago, Connor? Yeah. 26 years ago. 25. Thank you. Oh, was it? No. We just no. celebrated the 25th anniversary. It came out in 1997. Yeah. So, and it's 2023. It would be 20. It's, it's, oh, wait, it yeah, turn, you're right. We're in 26 this year. Okay, so whatever. It doesn't matter. I guess not. Um, this is a fun way to start the episode, by the way. It is a fun way. Um, and as you can see, I'm finally back home in North Carolina. <laughs> but let's, okay, let's dive on in. Okay, how the hell are you home in one piece after the nightmarish experience you had trying oh, to get Oh, oh, wow. I I almost forgot about that. I, I knew we were going to talk about that, but like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, for those of you who don't know, I, last week, I spent uh, the night at Connor's house because I was oh, staying in New York. Um, I only got a hotel for two nights, and the last night, I stayed at Connor's place. And, uh, so the next day, I went home. Uh, but here's the thing. Here's a funny thing that happened. So I actually kind of almost missed my flight because I was being an idiot and kind of decided to kill some time before my flight rather than just get there two hours early. Which arguably was not a great idea. No, it wasn't, especially considering that when I tried to. And by the way, so this was my flight was in the Newark airport. I should mention that. And New York, so, New Jersey. Yeah, Newark, New Jersey. So, okay. you know, I went to Penn Station to get on the New Jersey Transit. And guess what? The transit shut down. The power went out. So I did I not pay... know this part. Yeah. Oh, damn. So I was running late for my flight, and I bought a $90 lift ride to Newark. <gasps> yeah. Oh, my God. It was $90, yes. That's almost as much as you paid for your haircut. 
yeah, Connor, but but my haircut, I got to meet I got to meet a sexy man. OK, I didn't get to meet any sexy men on this. Did this you ride. try? Oh, my God, there's a spider. Kevin, there's a spider. Where? In front of my face. Holy oh, shit. Oh, in front of your face. Okay, so it's, that's a you problem. Holy shit. Because as you guys know, we're not in the same room anymore. That was a one-time thing. How do I kill this without... How do I kill this in a God-fearing way? Uh, it's... It, it, you, I, I don't know. Throw, I got throw it. A Bible at, oh my gosh. Are you, are you going to kill it with your, with your calendar? My tarot book. Oh, poor little thing. Now you got spider guts on your... I always pick up my spiders and I let them outside. Mm. I'm not going to judge you for killing it. Although I will judge you for just uh, for ruining a good book of yours. It wasn't that good of a book. I got it for $5 at Barnes & Noble. Okay, but still, like, now it's covered in spider it's guts. you with your story. Okay, so, yeah, so I got there late, but um, fortunately, my flight got delayed. I say that fortunately, and I, I was like... And this was after, like, I w it was too late for me to print out a uh, check-in. And by the way, you can't check in online at United if you don't have a checked-in bag. Oh, that's stupid. Yeah, it is really dumb. Um, so, anyway, uh, so, like, you know, I'm, like, really sad. I'm like, oh, no, I missed my flight. Oh, boo-hoo, I got to wait in customer service line to try to see what they can do for me. Uh, but then I got a text that my flight got... Uh, delayed by an hour and i'm like "Ooh, i still i can still make this so i ran ran upstairs back in line to check in <laughs> and fortunately i did i was able to check in and you know go through tsa and but then i kept getting texts at the like the gate like kept they kept changing gates where it was gonna be and that should have been a red flag there like the fact that they kept changing gates yeah so, you know, I finally got to the gate where it said that it was going to be after, like, running to a bunch of different gates, like, throughout the terminal. And, uh, yeah, and then, you know, I waited, and it was, went, I waited with all the other people who got deboarded, um, because, you know, they were taking people off, you know, because they, like, got delayed and stuff. Anyway, so... Time goes on, um, past the time where it said it was going to lift off, and, uh, there was... You know, they didn't open the doors or anything. So, like, everyone's kind of a little concerned. And then they announced that the flight got canceled completely. So, you know, I'm like, I don't know what to do. And I and they gave you, like, some kind of, like, app that you could, like, you know, get help on. And I tried that and it didn't work. And chances are it probably didn't work because everybody had to do it. Because guess what? Our flight was not the only one that got canceled. Almost every domestic flight got canceled at the Newark airport. And every what was United... the reason they were citing? Was it weather? Yeah, they cited that it was weather, which Fuck. is insane because the weather, you know, in New Jersey was kind of a little crummy, but I think it cleared up by then. And the weather in Asheville, my parents confirmed, like, is fine. Like, there was not a cloud mm -hmm. in the sky. So, yeah, so it does, you know what, it doesn't even matter at this point what the reason was because I ended up having, so I didn't, so I decided to go in the customer service line and I didn't even recognize the customer service line because it was so long. It was in a completely different part of the terminal. So I had to wait in this huge ass line because all these other people's flights got canceled or delayed or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and they can't get help on the app. So, you know, so we wait, so I ended up waiting in this line for a total of nine hours. Nine hours? Yes, nine hours. It was 9 p.m. Technically nine and a half, more like nine and a half, because it was 9 p.m. at when I got on this line, and it was 6 30 in the morning when I finally got to the desk. Holy I finally got shit. to the customer service desk and got help. Did they have anything to say for that? They really like I'm not sure what you mean by to say for that. Like, like they like, did why did it and... take you nine hours to assist the people in this line? Because there were so many of them, Connor. Fucking serious? Yes. Oh my god. Like Connor, this was a huge line. This like literally what this line was like literally wrapped around the terminal. God almighty. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it was it was pretty bad. Uh fortunately the people 
that I was in line with were very nice. And, you know, they would like, you know, save my spot whenever I had to leave for one reason or other. Cause I was by myself, by the way, in case anybody was wondering, I was by mm -hmm. myself. So it's not like I could like take a nap and, you know, let someone hold my place in line. No, 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 I couldn't do that. <laughs> yeah. Even though it was, it was getting real late. It was, I spent the whole night there and, you know, I'm like, I'm tired and I'm dirty. <laughs> what yeah. am I going to do? <laughs> and all the while you were supposed to be at a party in Tennessee. I was debating on whether, well, fortunately I never actually bought a ticket for that. So good. Yeah. Cause yeah. think to think I was going to go to that party in Tennessee. Ugh. but I almost, also, I almost kind of wish that I stayed one more day because, you know, I kept seeing I got I got serious FOMO from watching everyone's pride uh, pictures and videos. I mean, same. I get that. Connor, we got to go next year. I know you said you didn't want to, but we, we got to go. I almost went this year, but I ended up having to work anyway. But it was a good thing because my friend Lauren, not Lauren, not the Lauren, you know, a friend from work named Lauren. She oh. ended up going to New York City Pride, and she got robbed. She got robbed? She got robbed. Somebody stole her wallet and her car keys right out from her pocket in the middle of a crowd. Oh, shit. Yeah. So it might have been for the best that I didn't go, because I go with my little, like, lounge fly mini backpacks. I'm a walking target. Yeah, but Connor, you're a large man. Yeah, I know, but, like... Anybody can be a target. You don't need to be a certain body type in order to be a target. I don't know. I, I, I think that people would be less likely to like rob someone that if they turn around and punch you in the face, it would hurt. Well, maybe. Like, I, th I think I'm probably would be more susceptible because I'm small. Yeah, but you're sprightly. You could run fast and tackle them. Tackle them with what, Connor? I'm... Your body. What, all 140 pounds of my body? Oh, skinny legend over here. Who cares? <laughs> Actually, I think I'm probably like, I'm probably like 145 by, by oh, now. Maybe. I'm so I, don't, tiny. I don't know. Maybe I'm 150. I don't know. Not oh, sure. Probably God, not. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, yeah. And you... I ended up, and I, up and I ended up taking a flight to Charlotte, uh, which is about two hours from where I live. But it's, but my parents were actually, I was talking to them throughout this whole ordeal and they decided to cut, drive to Newark to pick me up. Oh and so God. fortunately by then they were closer to Charlotte than they were to Asheville. So they did manage to pick me up about half an hour after I landed. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, and that's how I got home. That's great. Well, I'm glad you made it home safe, even though it yeah. did take forever. Yeah. Forever. Um, but the rest of my day uh, there, but before my day before all that happened was pretty nice. I uh, walked around Green Lawn. Um, I went to the library and read a Teen Titans comic. Okay. And my mom mentioned you did go to the library while I was at work. Yes. Um, so then I went to the city and I uh, I went to the I went to the Stonewall Inn. How did you find it? Uh, Google. Uh. Apple Maps. I don't mean literally. I meant like, how did you find it? Like, did you enjoy it? <laughs> oh, I Sorry. mean, I mean, it. like, you know, it is, it was kind of cool to be there to be like, wow, so this is where that big historic event happened. But like, mm -hmm. it kind of is like just a bar. Like, it's just a well. bar. It's a bar. I mm. Yeah, I mean, it is just a bar. But like, you know, but like, I don't know, the fact that this all started with just a bar, like, I don't know, that's kind of cool. Definitely. And, that, and that this is the bar where it happened. Yeah, I know. It's like, it's, it's cool to like actually be in its presence. But when you get inside, you're like, eh, what do I do now? Well, it was pretty crowded when I was there. So I actually kind of waited. During Pride little... Month? No. Yeah. Okay. Well, it was the middle of the day. So like, I thought like, you know. I didn't think there would be anybody there. That's the time to go. That's when you get your pictures with it. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I, I did take a picture, which I guess I should have posted and told. But I've been kind of bad with that. I'm sorry, guys. I haven't really been posting any of the pictures from our New York trip. I post a couple of them. You took some in FAO Schwartz that I thought were really cute. Yeah, no, but I didn't post them yet. Oh, no, wait. I think I posted the one with you and the gorilla. Yes, you did, to my chagrin. Yes. Yeah, also, for some reason, you picked the photo where I'm, like, digging in my backpack, so it looks like I'm, like, stretching, like, getting ready to, like, throw down with this toy gorilla. 
Yeah, baby, because you were, right? You were going to throw down with that toy gorilla. <laughs> no, I was ready to run away from it. Connor, you can't run from a gorilla. Oh, maybe you can. <gasps> I don't know, actually. How you know, fast just... are gorillas? Fast, Kevin. Oh, my God. Well, I know bears are fast, but I don't know if... Are gorillas Gorilla, fast? Gorillas are fast. Gorillas okay, are you know what? I, I'm, you know what? I'm not going to argue with that. I'll just, I, I'll take your word for it because, okay. you know, a, a lot of animals are surprisingly fast. You know, right. hippos, elephants, uh, seals, cows. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, They're surprisingly fast. You can't, like, you know, you think you can run from them, but you can't. Delightful. Do you have some stories to share with us, Kevin? Oh, yes, I do. Well, yes. Nice. That segment thing that you do. Yes. Okay, so first story today, care homes host heartwarming pride events for LGBTQ elders. I can finally be myself. Oh, that's sweet. In possibly the most wholesome news of 2023, today care homes across the country are celebrating Silver Day Pride, which honors older members of the LGBTQ community. The celebration includes visits from drag queens, holding choir sessions, and hosting Pride-themed coffee mornings. Samantha Wolseley, an 80, uh, sorry, a 68-year-old trans resident at Belong, explained that the care home being so LGBTQ inclusive has meant she can finally be myself. Everyone is so accepting. I feel so comfortable here and I can finally be myself, Wolseley said. That's adorable. I love that. Also, 68 seems very young, but I guess it's not. Well, I well I slipped up and said 86. So the correct age is 68. Yes, yes, yes. They're 68. Still seems very young. Uh, Yeah. Okay, next story. Uh, Akater, you'll... I, Akater, actually, I told you about this while we were in the city, which I guess I missed this for some reason last week, but whatever. Uh, bro star Luke McFarlane welcomes baby girl with partner Hig Roberts. Yes, you did tell me this while we were looking for your hotel. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I was... Because, I don't know, for some reason I was checking out my Instagram stories while we were <laughs> looking for the hotel. I don't I don't know why. I, I think I was because I was I know why. Because I was recording an Insta story? I don't know. Mm -hmm. what, wh why? Why do you think? Why? You were trying to keep up with the hot boys. Maybe. Shut up. Anyway, uh, so, no, hot men, Connor. Okay, no. I'm not, I'm not Miranda Sings. We'll get no. to that. We'll get, we'll get there. We'll get to that. Uh, okay. On June 21st, the Brothers and Sisters star announced that he and his longtime partner, Hig Roberts, welcomed an adorable baby girl. <laughs> Tess Eleanor McFarlane, born June twenty uh, June fourth, twenty twenty three. We started life with some hectic days and received world class care. He wrote on Instagram. Cool, cool. So he went from a bro to a daddy. Yeah. <laughs> we, we also didn't talk about that during game show. They like just roasted bros as it deserved yeah, to have been. They, which is strange because Matt Rogers is best friend and Las Culturistas co-host, but when Yang was in that movie and yeah. nobody said when they asked, like, what was your favorite part of it? No one said the scene with Bo and Yang. Like what if someone had said that? I mean, I guess the scene with Bo and Yang, because the scene with Bo and Yang was really funny. Which one? The scene with him in it, with Bo and Yang in it from Saturday Night Live. Okay. It was when it was when they were in P Town, and like he's like the rich guy who was like they were trying to get money for to fund their museum. Oh yes, but he just kept him. on coming up with these insane ideas, like a ride through gay history, which ended up actually happening. Yes. Yeah, that was funny. Anyway, uh, so next story: New Jersey appoints first ever trans cabinet official. Oh, nice! New Jersey has made histor has made a historical appointment of Allison Myers as chair and CEO of the New Jersey Civil Service Commission, making her the first ever trans cabinet official. I know I'm up for this challenge, and I appreciate being considered for this opportunity. Her nomination was approved unanimously with a vote of 37 to 0. Allison Myers told local news outlets North New Jersey that being trans shouldn't prohibit me from living my life. That's why I came out, she said. This is who I am, and it's always been who I am. I love that. Yes. Congratulations. 
at, why is this not opening? There we go. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I guess that was kind of a... <laughs> I'm exposing how I'm getting these these stories. But anyway. Um, yeah. uh, okay, so Lizzo has donated to the Martha P. Johnson Institute uh, in honor of Pride Month and Juneteenth. Again, this is a story that happened last week that for some reason I didn't get. Sorry, everyone. We were talking too much. Yeah. I mean, well, we had a lot to talk about. Exactly. Okay. Anyway, so uh, in a short Instagram video, the About Damn Time singer announced that she would be giving $50,000 to L the LGBTQ organization as a part of her Juneteenth Give Back campaign. What the Marsha P. Johnson Institute does is protect and defend human rights, uh, the human rights of black transgender people. They do this by organizing community, advocating for the people, creating an inte intentional healing community, developing transformative leadership, and promoting collective power. Lizzo has donated has also donated fifty thousand dollars to four other charities as a part of the campaign, including the Save Our Sisters United, a safety s network for trans women of color. Thank you, Lizzo. That is very sweet and not surprising at all, given that what we know of Lizzo, she's like an absolute icon. So, this oh, yes, absolutely. Lizzo is an icon. Love her. We do love her. Lizzo, um, you know, come right? be on the show. <laughs> yeah, okay, we're gonna get Liz. Yeah, sure, we'll, we'll get Lizzo. Yeah, Lizzo, call our people. <laughs> All right, so uh, next story. Uh, queer wrestler uh, overwhelmed by crowd support. Oh, if I did see this. Yes, okay. Oh, you did? All right. I did, yeah, it was yeah. cute. If you told me years ago I'd have an arena chanting he's gay at me in the most positive <laughs> ways, I'd say you're crazy. <laughs> AEW wrestling star Anthony Bowens was overwhelmed with support as the crowd cheered and chanted, he's gay, amongst the lighthearted <laughs> banter within the ring. In a tweet, it sounds Bowens, like a homophobic attack, though. <laughs> but in the context, it was, it was, it's not homophobic. <laughs> I know. In a tweet, Bowens said, it's pretty cool to see how far we've come. Still more work to do. Happy Pride. Okay, so I should probably give you the context of yeah. this of why they were chanting he's gay it's because they were having one of the 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 female wrestlers was like accusing him of being into her yeah and like he's just like laughing in her face at this like, do you see how i'm dressed <laughs> well that was what he said oh is that what he said oh wait I yeah he said that. like i don't know if you can see what i'm wearing but i'm gay and the whole crowd erupted and it was hilarious Okay, I guess. Okay, I I must not be. I must have forgotten that part. Oh yeah, it was great. He's wearing like a bright pink like. Well, yeah, but wrestling. so is his. But so is his part. He he's in a ta he's a part of a tag team duo, and his ta and his partner is straight and wears the same oh. outfit. Okay, well I didn't know that. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. So I knew about this because I I followed this guy on Instagram, Anthony Bowens. Of course you do. He, yeah, of course I do. Have you seen him, Connor? Like. Connor, you can't even judge me for this. You cannot no, even judge I can. Me. The only people you follow are people with six packs. That's not true. It's not untrue. That's not that's not true. Sometimes I follow people with kegs. No. Anyway. Abs are overrated, Connor. Mm-hmm. It's chests that that really get that get people. Oh, just finish the story. Okay, uh, no, I did finish the story. So, yeah, that okay. was the context of why they were shouting, he's gay. <laughs> uh, okay, oh my god, I'm sorry. <laughs> why is this hard? Okay, Netflix's glamorous star, Miss Benny, comes out as trans. I'm a proud person. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay, happy... Pride, Miss Benny, and congratulations. Miss Benny, who began her career as a singer on YouTube before transitioning into acting with roles on TV's Love Victor and American Horror Stories, went on to reflect on her difficult childhood growing up queer in a religious Texas household. She mm. came out publicly as transgender in a touching personal essay. If someone like me is out there feeling the weight of being othered, I want them to have a place that they can see someone like us thrive and be celebrated, she said. Very nice. Con so, Connor, have you seen 
uh, Netflix is glamorous yet. No. Oh. You know I don't watch the stuff that you watch, Kevin. Well, I actually haven't seen it either uh, because I don't have Netflix anymore and I'd have to oh. get it like on the Plex server, which again, I'm not even sure if that's legal, but whatever. Oh, sorry. Y'all hearing booming? Uh, there's they put out fireworks the tonight. What? I got, I got the same thing. Explosions outside my door. It's uh, my dog's freaking out. Oh, no. Your poor dog. Yeah, my dog that hates you. Your dog that, like, she, like, I drove her crazy, like, fireworks, so it's like, woof. Actually, it would be really funny if Lucy wasn't afraid of fireworks, like, she was totally chill around them. But, like, I'm the one who sets her off. Well, <laughs> well what? No, I mean, like, I guess that would be funny. <laughs> okay, I thought you were like, well. Anyway, so, uh, the show Glamorous, by the way, um, has the, a has the actor in it who I am almost certain is going to play Hercules in the live action remake. Are they, did they confirm that it's actually happening? No, nope, the cast has not happened. It's not been announced yet. It's driving me crazy. Disney. Wait, no, but they announced that there is going to be a live action Hercules. Oh yes. It's, it's in development. It's, the Ooh. production has began. Begun. So, but they won't cast. They won't announce the casting. It's driving me crazy. Just tell me that this gay man is playing Hercules. Disney. <laughs> Oh, God. Disney's first queer character in Greek mythology. Well, speaking of Disney's first queer characters. Oh, Lord. Buzz Lightyear branded as an LGBTQ ally after slaying Disney Parade. Excuse me? Everyone's favorite Disney space toy, uh, Buzz Lightyear has been branded as an LGBTQ ally after gagging onlookers at a Disney parade while dancing with a rainbow pride flag. Oh, I did a pride see fan. This. Fan, not yes. flag. Toy Story fans have left. This fan. <laughs> Toy Story fans have leapt at the chance to proclaim the gruff superhero voiced by Tim Allen in the uh -huh. film as that an ally of the community or possibly part of the community himself. You can't I would tell like me to... what? Sorry. You can't tell me Buzz isn't by theorized one fan. Come on, there's definitely some underlying tones with Woody. I would like to say being voiced by Tim Allen automatically takes him out of the the running. The running of what? Of being in the LGBTQ community. Tim Allen would never. But Chris voice... Evans would. Chris, Chris Evans, Evans would. would. He's voiced Chris by Evans. Chris Evans now, Connor. Yeah, I know, but like we're talking about the toy version. I mean, Buzz Lightyear is Buzz Lightyear, Connor. Don't start with that oh, shit. Oh, what? So, so, the, so the actual human Buzz Lightyear is an ally, but toy Buzz Lightyear is a bigot. 100%. <laughs> it's like, just imagine the toy version of yourself is a bigot. <laughs> it, like, hates gay people. Did like, you ever see that? Your best friend, meanwhile, your best friend is, like, imagine if your best friend and, like, mentor and, like, personal hero is a black lesbian but the toy version of yourself is a homophobic racist. <laughs> I would love that. Does I mean, uh, cause like, yeah, it doesn't really come to surprise me that people would label Buzz as an ally because in the movie Lightyear, like his best friend is a black lesbian. Yes. Oh my gosh. What was I going to say? Did you ever see that interview of, Oh, what was her freaking name? Sarah Silverman. When she was promoting Wreck-It Ralph, the first movie, she went on, I think it was Jimmy Kimmel or I don't know, one of the Jimmies um, and said like, oh, they made my character into a toy. And she did a gag where she had Vanellope say like all sorts of horrendous shit. I didn't, I never see, I never, never seen that. It was actually really funny. Like she like said like, oh, push her stomach, Jimmy. And he does. And it says like, I have oral herpes. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute isn't wait isn't jimmy kimmel her husband or was her husband at least excuse me no sarah selberman yes yeah she was married to jimmy kimmel i don't uh, know if she still is i don't think so but yes they, they dated. oh they only dated oh okay okay they, they dated but broke up okay oh that's right because she's fucking matt damon yeah th 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 that part remember when epic movie tried to parody that but it was a pg-13 movie so they said i'm dating matt damon <laughs> yeah <laughs> no it wasn't epic movie it was um disaster movie that was it oh, sorry gosh. got my got my post scary movie parodies mixed up yeah right
superhero movie. Yeah, superhero movie. The vampires suck. Remember that one? Connor? Oh, I remember that one. Oh, yeah. The starving games. Meet the Spartans. Anyway, um, okay, so. So next story, uh, Dylan Mulvaney slams Bud Light for abandoning her. Oh, no, what happened? Well, you know what happened, Connor. You know, Dil like Bud Light, you know, sponsor Dylan Mulvaney, and then, you know, Republican backlash, and then they were like, we're sorry, we hate trans people, actually. Yeah. And, you know, but... That wasn't good enough for them. Well, I don't know what what did how exactly did Bud Light respond to the backlash again? They I responded don't... with a nothing apology. They're just like, "Oh, we want to represent everybody. We want we want to keep everybody happy, and that's literally impossible." Yeah, so, you can Yeah, it, you can't keep everybody happy. It's just uh, that's upsetting. I'm sorry for Dylan. Yeah, Dylan Mulvaney has broken her silence about her Bud Light sponsorship as she slams the company for going silent in her time of need. For a company to hire a trans person and then not publicly stand by them is worse, in my opinion, than not hiring a trans person at all. It has serious and grave consequences for the rest of our community. Yeah, 100%. Hmm. Yeah, it's like, and that's why we're, we don't like corporate pride, because like... Yeah, they, corporations are... Never welcome a pride, in my opinion. Yeah. Even when they give me the free stuff that I will most likely not use, I don't like it. Have you used that T-Mobile Tumblr yet? No, it's still sitting here. That's okay. I haven't used mine either. <laughs> yeah, Because it holds like two sips of vodka and then it's done. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know why I said vodka. Like, I'm a hardened I mean, alcoholic. <laughs> I mean, that's, I don't know. You named a drink. It's not, that's not that big of a deal, Connor. We're not know, judging you like... for being a, Connor, it's okay. We're not judging you for being an alcoholic. We're judging you for being gay. Yes, exactly. Um, U.S. Supreme Court deals major blow to queer rights. Rules designers can discriminate against LGBTQ customers. I'm sure yeah. that many of you have probably heard this story uh, by now know Good about this probably. but you know we can't we can't not talk about this yeah. the u.s supreme court has dealt a major blow to lgbtq rights by ruling that a colorado wedding website designer can refuse to create work for members of the community if it conflicts with religious beliefs the decision was re reached by a six to three vote for the conservative supermajority and opens the door for businesses to refuse service to LGBTQ people based on their sexuality. The dissent from the three Liberty Justices, which was written by uh, Sonia Sotomayor, joined by Elena K K Kagan and Katenji Brown Johns Jackson, <laughs> describes the ruling as License to discriminate, that is profoundly wrong. So let's talk about how this all happened from a hypothetical scenario. She was yeah. never actually asked to design a, a wedding for a same-sex couple. That part. She was this never, is... no gay person asked her to do shit. And yeah. if you've actually seen some of her designs, no I gay person not. would. <laughs> That's great. I'm not just saying that to be shady. Her shit is ugly, Connor. Oh, shit. I mean, granted, I know I'm, like, you know, not, I'm not the best with mine, but, like, I'm not charging people for it or use, coming up with excuses that, like, you know, I'm not going to work for this group of people, and I'm gonna, mm. you know, fight for my right to not work for this group of people, even though I get no clients. Right. <laughs> and I don't even have a business. <laughs> but maybe I should, though. Maybe I should be a graphic designer who says I'm not gonna, I... I won't serve Christians. I won't serve Republicans. You can't. Yeah. I have the legal right to do that. You absolutely do, because they just signed it into law. Yep. Oh, my God. Uh, so, yeah, Supreme Court is uh, going bad right Court. now. It's like And it's like conserv conservatives do everything they can to make everything worse for everyone in America. And then they wonder why young people hate America. Yeah, they're like mm, must be liberal brainwashing. It's like keep no, it, you idiot. It like you, Kevin. It's because you. It's like no, you. It's because you ruin everything. You stupid bitch. Keep it light, Kevin. Keep it light. You ruined everything. You stupid bit. bitch. 
I'm gonna get Rachel Ruin Bloom to tap in your throat. Everything, you stupid, stupid bitch. You're just a lying little bitch who ruins things and wants the world to burn. Oh, bitch, you're a stupid bitch and lose some weight, Kevin. <laughs> What? That's the lyrics of the song! You sang the entire song. <laughs> that wasn't the entire song. That was just one verse. You sang the entire... Kevin, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you're not mad at me for the lose some weight part. <laughs> I, mean, I, I No, Kevin, I'm... Yo, I've, I've already been canceled for being fatphobic like several times on this show. <laughs> yes, you have. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, is that the last story that you had to share? Uh, yes, it is the last it's... story. Oh, thank God. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. You give me Ajita, you know that? You make me sweat like I had just eaten like a pound of pork. I swear to God. Connor, that's a trap, okay? I'm not falling for that one. Okay, sure. You ever get the meat sweats? Connor, stop it. You are baiting me right now. Stop I don't like that. it. I feel like I'm on freaking Z-Way right now. Z-Way? <laughs> yeah, because you know how she's like, she's always like trying to get like her guests to say something racist. Like, yes. Like she's like, so how many black friends did you have in school? Yes, I know. Or like, you know, something like that. She's an icon. I love her. <laughs> yeah, she is. And you're, and I feel like you're doing the same thing with me, but you know, with, with fat instead of black. Why did sure. I word it like that? God damn. See, it worked. Oh, fuck. God damn it. And just like that, I won without doing anything. <laughs> You're like Luigi. You won without doing anything. I won like Luigi, yes. Is that Which a niche reference? I don't know. Which hopefully is how Biden will win. I don't want Biden to win again. Connor, you know what our other options are, right? No, I really don't. I just don't like what we've got. I know. I know. Me neither. But uh, whatever. Right. Whatever. It's whatever. Let's talk about fun stuff. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, um, fun stuff. Like, like Connor, your hyperfixation of the week. Do you have to just dump me? Well, it's, we've been talking for 37 minutes. Okay. Okay. It really, it's my hyperfixation of the week. I'm, I'm going to yeah, be it, honest with you guys. It's mine. Let's like, fix it together, shall we? I Like, I okay. sent Connor this and told him we have to talk about this on the podcast. Like, even this is your hyperfixation of the week. Even if it wasn't hyperfixation of the week, it was going to be addressed because this is batshit crazy okay it is so batshit crazy let's provide you with a little bit of context Please. um perhaps you may have heard of a i'm gonna say the word famous youtuber um by yeah, the name she's of famous connor she's famous uh by the name of miranda sings she's very uh very distinct look she's got the giant red lipstick she's got like the tied up buttoned up she's got the red sweatpants hey guys it's me miranda like she's got a very specific voice, you know, she's and and she makes a her entire thing is that she thinks that she's like the greatest singer of all time. And yet she sounds like a cat in a blender. Um, This is a character I should probably mention. She is portrayed by Colleen Ballinger. She's an actual human being YouTuber who has her own separate thing from Miranda. Um. Miss Colleen Ballinger is she's kind of made a name for herself as somebody who spreads positivity. She's all about like, I want to treat everybody with kindness. I want to make sure everybody's happy in this life. I don't want to cause harm to anybody. Do no harm. Take no shit kind of person, you know? Well, Miss Ballinger recently found herself in a little patch of hot water. Uh, so her character, Miranda Sings, is very popular with like the tween crowd, like tween early teens. Well, sort pretty of. much everything on the internet is pretty much anything that's popular on the internet is yeah exactly but she's been on youtube for over 10 years now so she's been around mm -hmm. for quite some time and uh because she is so closely associated with that age group that's who she associates with most frequently right her fan mm -hmm. base is very active like she is constantly talking to them engaging with them and interacting with them some have said on an inappropriate level, and it's just come to light that Ms. Ballinger has been inappropriately interacting with some of her younger fans. Um, one example is during a live stream where she was giving out prizes to uh, people who were making donations to childhood cancer. She uh, said one of the prizes is this 
sexy lingerie that I used for a bit as Miranda. Whoever makes this donation gets it. Oh, this person made the donation. Congratulations. I'm going to mail you this lingerie in the mail. And the person turned out to be under the age of 18. Yep. To mail somebody sexy underwear when they're not yet of the age of consent. That's not okay. That's really not okay. Um, She also made an enemy of a person who I believe their name was Adam, if I'm not mistaken. Adam McIntyre. Yes, Adam McIntyre. Uh, She had hired him to run the Miranda Sings Twitter for a day, I believe. Like she was actually paying him and she didn't like the content that he was producing. And I believe she fired him ceremoniously and like blocked him and didn't give him credit for the work that he had done. So, and also the fact that he was also under the age of 18. So it was also another inappropriate way to talk to somebody who was in the fan base. So now with all of this, that's coming to light of how she's behaving, people are telling her, you need to be held accountable for your actions. We're canceling you as is the way in modern day age. Mm -hmm. Now you have been canceled. Exactly. Now, Colleen has actually made a video in the past talking about the drama with the underwear and the Adam and all that sort of stuff. And she addressed it. She said, I apologize. I would like to move on. People have told her, we don't want to move on. We would like to see you canceled. We're fed up with you. So now it's kind of into a wildfire. And she made a second video that Mm kind of went viral this week. And Kevin referenced it at the beginning of this episode. Yep. The video begins with Colleen sitting there, just like completely silent, staring at the camera, very solemn. And then she pulls out a fucking ukulele. (laughs) A ukulele, like she's goddamn Steven Universe. I swear to God, she pulls out a goddamn ukulele and she starts singing her, I guess you would call it her swan song. I don't know. She, this video is not an apology. This video is not an an excuse, but also an excuse, like excuses. This video is not an apology in any sense of the word. It's basically so, saying, I know what you, I did wrong. What? So, Connor, have you actually seen the video yourself? Yes. Oh, my God. I can't. Wh- oh, now we finally watch the actual thing we're talking about. Because you always like to have this dynamic where I've seen something and you haven't. And like, and now uh, we watch the same thing. Would you like me to lie and say I haven't seen it? Would you like that, Kevin? Would that make you happy? I don't know, Connor. I just... No, you don't. So let's continue. Um, So this video is not an apology. It is literally just her singing a made-up song talking about, I know what I did was wrong. I shouldn't have done it. But it's in the past. I can't undo it. So I guess I'll just be canceled. I'm sorry. I couldn't please you. Well, well, there's one part of it that you're missing. The fact that she, like, really likes to emphasize that it's just all... You know, toxic gossip. The toxic gossip train. Connor, copyright. <laughs> a one-way ticket to manipulation station. Yeah, like she basically okay. was trying to say, like, you know, you guys are blowing this out of proportion. Like you're yeah. trying to twist like this narrative to make me look like the bad guy. But even though she's all, she is owning up to, you know, doing it. But she's also downplaying a lot of the severity of what she did. Like, yeah. like she said that she got canceled for a fart joke when what actually happened was, you know. She was like putting, she put an underage girl on stage and like spread her legs while yeah. she was like wearing a skirt and no pants. Mm-hmm. Like this girl, and like she farted on her and said, Oh, that's a fart joke. It's like, No, that's not, that's, <sighs> oh God. See, I should probably clarify that Connor and I were both fans of Miranda Sings. Yeah. We both really enjoyed her content. I stopped watching Colleen's content about like, two three years ago because she started deviating from what i expected from her and i just was like i'm not really into her that much anymore and then to find out all these allegations yeah i i was ready to be in her corner i was right okay do i believe that miranda or colleen ballinger is a pedophile no do i believe that she's intentionally grooming children to do sexual activity with them no do I believe that everything she has done is really bad and she needs to be held accountable? 100%. Because these things were really excusable. That poor girl probably did not want that to happen. And if she had been told in advance, this is what we're going to do to you, do you consent? Even then, she can't consent because she's underage. It's really fucked up. 
Yeah, it is. Yeah, I, I <laughs> see. Here's the thing. I was a fan of hers, but I've never actually watched any of her live shows. So I had no idea that she was doing these this weird shit with kids. Yeah. On stage, like 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 a reoccurring bit that she does, apparently, is where she basically slut shames what like a child is wearing and says, yeah. that's porn. That's porn. Yeah. Yeah, no, like this is all coming from her fan base, like the people that watched her growing up. They have now grown up and realized, like, hey, some of the shit she was doing was really not okay. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people are coming forward and like saying, like, you know, saying, like, I was at a Miranda Sings show and she, you know, she like, you know, put me on stage and sexualized me in a way that made me uncomfortable. Like, she she yeah. sexualized me. She made me do stuff that made me uncomfortable. Like, you know, and, yeah, and I mean, it's yeah, and it's kind of sad it's like it, you can't really even call it allegations anymore because like because like you yeah. know we have the video footage of like these kids doing things and now they're coming forward and saying yeah this was that was me in that video and this is not okay that wasn't okay yeah definitely it's really sad because i again was i was ready to be there behind her being like i know you're not doing this to be a bad person but you still did something bad and for you to say like oh the toxic gossip train it's like they're manipulating your perception of me my reputation is dead now it's like no you 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 knew what you were doing when you started this and it's really depressing that i have to now look at you and see a bad person yeah oh, god it's like great now i could never it's like i mean to be fair her content was getting kind of i mean her content was getting kind of old. I think I stopped watching probably before you were. Yeah, no, I never, I never even content is. I like, never even finished season two of ba Haters Back Off. I did, did you, finish it. It Haters Back Off was funny, but it also got like emotionally devastating at times. And I was like, I don't want this with my Miranda. Yeah, it was yeah, like her dad were, like verbally abuses her into the closet, and it was like, holy shit, I didn't sign up for this. Yeah, like the way that season one ended, I was like, whoa, where yeah. the hell did this come from? Like, oh, yeah, like this is freaking tonal whiplash. Like, yeah, like, I'm sorry. I thought we were here to watch a clown show. And now <laughs> all of a sudden, like, like, and like the mom, mom could is, die. <laughs> the mom has liver disease. Like what? Yeah, or right. kidney disease, kidney disease. My bad. Yeah, and she literally says, Miranda, I could die. And I'm like, when when did I switch to general hospital? What the fuck? I know. Like <laughs> it was like so heavy. Oh, and then God. that final shot of just Miranda looking at her computer alone, like, dude. Mm -hmm. And then season two picks up where oopsie turns out the uncle was living in the shed the whole time. Yeah, and she's taking a bath in spaghettios. Yeah. It's like I, I I can't keep up with my emotions. How I did yeah, that? Yeah, it's like yeah, that show was just very. But anyway, weird. back to Colleen. Right. Yeah. This p apology video, people are making fun of it because it deserves to be made fun of. It's yeah, actually... it's it's literally like I've heard so many people make the joke from like compare it to that uh part in Victorious where uh cat couldn't speak because of her doctor told her not to because she had and then she's like and then she's like but he didn't say i couldn't sing <laughs> yeah you no know, she literally says that in the video is like my people have told me not to talk about what i want to say but they didn't say i couldn't sing it so yeah that's literally okay. what Colleen did. and it's funny because ariana grande and colleen Valentine used to be friends in real life I mean, they're probably not anymore. Like uh, you never know. I, you I, really I, never know, Kevin. Like Ariana, did you just cut your losses, girl? Like you haven't. You better to her. stop filming Wicked to address these allegations. Or you know, just say I don't know her, and uh, you know, move on. And say you change baristas. Say you change baristas. <laughs> anyway. Now, yeah, that was more or less my hyperfixation of the week. I just, I mean, it was a sad if, story, but it was so funny. I highly recommend check out her video. It's literally just called High Period. I don't know. I don't recommend actually checking it out yourself because it's just over 10 minutes long. You know what that means, Connor? She monetized it. Yes. Yes. She monetized her apology. I just ugh. and also it's a song, so like anybody who uses it to like you know make fun of her, she can copyright claim it. 
Yeah. Oh my god. It was absolutely incredible. I I just if you had told me Miranda Sings response to grooming allegations via ukulele song, if you had that on your 2023 bingo card, um what businesses should I invest in? What are tomorrow's lottery numbers? Yeah, what are tomorrow's lottery numbers? <laughs> Where should I put my stocks and bonds? Oh my god! I did you see that one girl that w- actually got bingo on her 2020 or 2023 bingo card? Got what? She got bingo like, and we're in July or June when it happened. Oh really? Oh. Yeah, one of them like, a submarine will sink, and like the other one was like, oh, I gotta find that video and send it to you. Okay. Yeah. But send uh, it. yeah, I I sent her a message. I was like, I don't know if it's appropriate to say congratulations, but way to go on getting bingo <laughs> yeah like congratulations you predicted that people were gonna die in a submarine yeah right oh, did you see that they said they found human remains in the re- the wreckage now did they i didn't hear uh, about that allegedly but allegedly that was allegedly yeah so i guess the orcas didn't didn't uh didn't ch- well i guess they, they wanted to leave a message kevin what the fuck I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm still, I'm still on the, I'm still the orcas kick. I'm still from last week where, you know, we were theorizing that the orcas sank the, the sub. Um, you were theorizing that. Yes. And, and I, <laughs> when I went to karaoke night this week, I sang my heart will go on and, oh. and under the sea. Kevin, what the fuck? I'm sorry. I know. Oh my god, is this my cancelable offense? I no, but it's not great. And then I sung "How Far I'll Go" from Moana, and then I sung. Uh, Why are Holy you Man- singing so many times at karaoke? Are you letting anybody else go? Yes, I was there. I was there early, Connor, because I was going the to fuck? another event. Yeah, I, I usually for- sing maybe twice, and then I'm out. But I like to. I like to sing karaoke. I like it. It's fun. It means private orchestra in Japanese. Yeah, and I like a private orchestra. That's don't say it like that. Yeah, okay, that did sound kind of weird. I will, I will concede to that. Um, but yeah, and then I, and then I song uh, "No Air" by Jordan Sparks. Set. No. Tell me how I'm supposed to breathe with no air. Oh, stop it, please, Kevin. <laughs> anyway, what else did we want to talk about? Because we are running out of time. Ah, uh, the other two got canceled, Connor, before you e- ever even got to watch it. Did it? Yes. I thought it was canceled, like, a long time ago. No, it's it just canceled now. It's, uh, yeah, they aired the last episode oh. uh, this week. And it was pretty, and you know what? I liked the last episode. It was pretty good. Like, you know, I, it's like, on the one hand, I'm really sad the show ended. But on the other hand, you know... I'm glad that, you know, it ended on a high note. Yeah, that's a good point. You don't always get that with TV shows. Exactly. It's like, you know, like I was just thinking about, uh, you know, I was thinking about most popular girls at school today. And, <laughs> you know, I was thinking about how, like, yeah, it's sad that that show's over. But, like, you know, it was starting to decline in quality before it yeah. ended. So it's like it's probably best that it ended where it did. Yeah. Because then, you know, it begs the question, you know, what's better? You, you know, what would you rather have? Would you rather have a show that ends early, but like on the right at the right time? Or would you have a show just never stop and like just that's like, how you no end up how- once upon a time season seven. Connor, once upon a time was never good to begin with. Let's be Yes, real. it was. Yes, it was. I will fight you on this. Season one and two were great. Sure, Connor. Anyway, would you rather have that or would you rather have a show that just goes on forever and like, you know, just keeps on diving in quality? Like, you know, because that that's like, would you that's rather how have, you get the Simpsons? Like, would you rather have Gravity Falls or would you rather have the Simpsons? Absolutely. Yeah, but oh it is kind of, but like, it's, it was such a smart show and I'm so sad that it's over. And it, but also, apparently there were like, you know, like, their hr complaints oh really which is really ironic because the show is all about like the toxic culture of the entertainment industry (laughs) and yet like apparently the main showrunners were like verbally abusive to their writers oh shit 
And it's like, I feel really conflicted about this because on the one hand, because like between this and like hearing about how the Spider-Verse animators were overworked, mm -hmm. it's like, I'm like, I'm sorry that that happened to you, but. We got a good product out of it. We got a good product. <laughs> like, I really like the product that it made. So it's like, uh, sorry that happened it's... to you, but it was worth it. <laughs> That's how I feel anytime I watch The Shining, because I know how like poorly Stanley Kubrick treated Shelley Duvall. Oh my God. Movie. It's like, oh God. It's like, yeah, Shelley, I'm sorry this happened to you, but like. You served cunt, so. <laughs> So it all worked out in the end. <laughs> you didn't hear that, did you? Oh my God, Connor, are you about to poop your pants again? I am not again. What are you talking about again? All right, it's okay, Connor. I, I'm... <laughs> Kevin, I would like to end now. Okay, we can end. I feel like there was something else that we were we should talk we should have talked about but i don't i don't remember now i don't know what else there is to talk about i feel I like we know. covered all bases i know i feel like we did oh my god it's so wild oh um obviously we are now in the month of july we're coming very close to our one year anniversary kevin one year one year is all it takes should we have what? cake oh no not if you're baking it <laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm gonna bake a cake for our one year anniversary of fruity cereal. I'm, 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 I'm sure you are, but I will not be able to nor willing to eat it. Connor, my cakes are good. I'm a good baker. Mm, yeah, I'm Betty a Crocker. great baker. Okay, you and Betty Crocker make a great team, Kevin. We do. Okay, <sighs> Betty Crocker wishes she was me. I'm a Sara Lee fan myself, but whatever. Railroad, <laughs> railroad me till I'm dead, Daddy. What the fuck? Have you never seen the Sarah Lee skit from SNL? No. You have to watch the Sarah Lee skit with from Stop SNL. Stop telling with... me what I have to watch. I don't like being told what I have to watch. Okay, fine. You should watch. I don't Sarah... want to. <laughs> but I'm telling you, it's funny. No. And it's with Harry Styles. I don't know why my brain... Like auto completed. It's been so sentence. long. Wait, how long has it been since we talked about Harry Styles? Months. <gasps> Sammy Joe has entered the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy Joe has entered the chat. I gotta tell her that's like a reoccurring. Yeah, she's now a meme on our show. You're a meme on the. She should. That should be a soundboard. Like Sammy Joe has entered the chat. <laughs> oh my gosh. We need. We should get a soundboard. That's too much work. Anyway. Um. I forgot what I was going to say. I think I'd like to just say goodnight. <laughs> yes, let's say goodnight. And also, wait, one more thing about the Colleen Ballinger situation. Okay. Uh, how come no conservatives are freaking out about this? The ones who are, like, so concerned about children being groomed? It's like, where are y'all? Because she's straight. Yeah. We have to protect them. Yeah. Anyway. that's It's almost like that. She did make is. a bunch of cute kids, though. Did you see her children? Connor, don't, don't humanize her right now. No, like she's got like three adorable little babies and they're all adorable. Yeah. And her husband is so sweet. Oh, God. That's the reason I was so reluctant to cancel her. It was like because she's. Ugh. Well, have you anyway. heard what her have you heard what her ex-husband has said? Her ex-husband's a douchebag. I fucking hate him. I don't care what he has to say. All right, if you say so, because like basically, Sorry. you know, you know, he was saying that like, yeah, she likes to play the victim a lot. And, you know, no matter what the situation is and yeah, her ex-husband. Yeah. And she like, you know, manipulates people and like, but that's what she's doing now. So like, you know, Joshua DTV piece of shit. Sorry. I'll burn that bridge. I don't want him on the show. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, uh, this has been the fruity cereal. I hope you, I hope you slurped up your milk. Ew! Stop it, Kevin. Oh God. Anyway, thank you for joining us on this wonderful Monday at seven p.m. Uh, if you would like to watch any more of our episodes, you can do so anywhere you get your podcasts on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Acast. Uh, our video format, as always, is exclusive to YouTube, youtube.com slash ETB Network. And if you're watching it there, hit a like. Yes, please. Always leave those reviews. They're always going to be helpful. Oh, ooh, here's a fun little game for to boost our YouTube views. If you're viewing this on YouTube, 
Uh, which character am I holding up? Comment which character I'm holding up. Mickey Mouse. God fucking damn it, Connor! We're we're trying to boost engagement here. I thought you told me what to do, and I did it. Oh my god. What character am I holding up? Mr. Rogers over here. Anyway, uh, thank you for joining us this fabulous Monday. I hope to see you next Monday at 7 p.m. right here on the Empty the Bench Podcast Network. Uh, Connor, where can people find you? Uh, you can follow me on social media at ConnorK592. And you can follow me anywhere at It's Kevin Alito. It's I-T-S-K-E-V-I-N-O-L-E-A-R. Why did you say that with a British accent? I'm not British, but I could speak British bitch. I don't Call speak German, phone. but I can if you like. Ow! <laughs> Lady Gaga. Uh, anyway, thank you for joining us once again. We will see you next Monday at 7 p.m. on the Empty the Bench Podcast Network. Stay fruity! I think we should...